I don't think I can remember a time when I didn't have dance in my life. It all started in Toronto. I grew up in the west end of the city where I started dancing at a local ballet school and took all of the disciplines, ballet, tap and jazz. I was a very hyperactive child and it was an opportunity to um, expel some of that energy. I was addicted from the first moments I stepped foot into a studio and that is still my most natural habitat. We relocated to the UK and I was really considering stopping altogether. And it wasn't until I saw uh, an advertisement, a new school that was opening that was founded by Peter Schaaf as an international guest artist and at that time the director of London Festival Ballet. But it wasn't going to be like any other school. And that's what really caught my eye. It was a hands-on, all-immersive training and we were working with the company eight hours a day. It was all of the moment, in the moment, and we really felt a part of London Festival Ballet at that time as this company that was really changing the face of classical ballet, especially with the contemporary work that Peter was bringing in. It was that exposure to the work of Parsons and Tetley and Taylor that really started me to think about what could be next for me in the, in the career. The resident choreographer at English National Ballet at that time was Christopher Bruce and it was announced that he was going to become the new director of Rambert Dance Company. So after five years at English National Ballet, having danced a lot, I made the move to Rambert Dance Company because I wanted to experience and explore more contemporary work and to have work made on me as an artist. I wanted that involvement, I wanted that investment. Christopher Bruce was director at Rombert for 10 years and I was with him for the entire tenure. When he left, I felt that I wasn't quite done yet and I really wanted to see, I, again, it was still that curiosity. I was drawn to choreographers and there was a few choreographers at Hubbard Street at that time that I was very, very keen in learning from and to, and to be in the same room as. And that was why I needed to branch out and, and to have that experience before I felt I was ready to either walk away from dance or to redefine myself in another aspect of the career. When I realized at Rambert that one could be a stager, I remember approaching Christopher Bruce and he was like, but you're still dancing. And I was like, but I could do both. And luckily, just before I'd gone to Hubbard Street, we had made a plan that I would eventually help him with staging some of his work. The first time I worked with the National Ballet of Canada as a stager was staging Christopher Bruce's Rooster. I was so nervous and so intimidated to walk through those doors and work with Karen Kane, who was the artistic director at that time, and to have her sat in rehearsals. I was absolutely just starstruck. I think at that time, Karen also realized my enthusiasm for the job and spoke to me about my experiences there. And she was always so supportive and interested and very sincere. And when I found out they were working with Crystal Pite, I'm a super fan. And I emailed Karen and said, if you need anyone to support this rehearsal period, I'm, I'm your woman. And she said, okay. And then I found myself supporting and meeting and working with the incredible Crystal Pite, having the best time, creating the most incredible work, that has brought such amazing opportunities to travel and to stage it in different parts of the world. It was one of the most rewarding experiences to watch her create and work with artists and something that I will never ever forget and I'm very, very grateful to Karen for giving me that opportunity. I really wanted to become a rehearsal director and to learn that part of being in an organisation I had an opportunity to go to Scottish Ballet. The artistic director at that time, Ashley Page, said, well, why don't you come over and we can meet? And if anything becomes available in the future, then we've done the groundwork. I loved the company. 
They had a wonderful new facility in Glasgow and Ashley had done amazing things with the repertoire. It was a very exciting and interesting place to, to start that part of my journey. And then Christopher Hampson came in and took over as artistic director. He was someone that I knew. He was with me as a dancer at English National Ballet. And sometimes when you find yourself with an old friend, it just clicks again and you're back into the rhythm. We shared a common philosophy. We understood the versatility that the dancers needed to have. We had a firm commitment to training. Christopher was kind enough to also let me get involved in some of company life and to show me different elements of the management of a company. And it was at that point where he promoted me to assistant artistic director. He did nothing but support me, which I'm so grateful for. He really wanted me to have that experience. It really helped establish me on the road to being an artistic director. I applied for a couple of different companies before I made the move to Charlotte. But the thing that attracted me about Charlotte Ballet at the time is because it had a stability. It also had a number of dancers that felt very familiar to me in terms of the size of the company. Even though I've been in large ballet companies and smaller contemporary companies, Scottish Ballet was in the middle and this was kind of bridging that gap. I really liked the fact that they were experimenting with some more contemporary repertoire. So I had some experience in all aspects of the job. The only thing that I hadn't really done was program an entire three years. This was the first time that it was all under my name and my neck was on the line. That was scary, but it was super fulfilling. And the biggest shock to me, I think, was the inability to live in the moment uh, because you're always on to the next thing and you're always thinking about how can I do it better or what can I get the dancers that will challenge them more or what, what do they need now? And again, that element of care and that responsibility for all of these young divine creatures, it's difficult to live in the moment with it because you always have to be one step ahead. It's a hard act to follow. <laughs> this is the National Ballet of Canada. This is Karen Kane. Those two things have been synonymous for me my whole life. She's in the DNA of the organization. She's in the fiber of it. I think the repertoire that she's built, the authentic way she's led the company, and the beauty of her as a person, as, as an artist, I think it's just informed the character of the company. I am humbled to think that I am going to be following in her footsteps. The support that she's given me and the kindness that she's shown to me moving into this role, I, I'm just, I'm, I couldn't be more excited or thrilled to be the next director. My hopes and dreams for National Ballet Canada is that we will continue the standard of excellence that has been built over the years and to continue to cultivate new voices and choreographers and to curate a repertoire unlike any in the world and to educate our audiences to provide access to have an inclusive, supportive, encouraging working environment. I just want the company to continue to go from strength to strength. I'm so looking forward to coming back to Toronto, back to the city that I remember from my childhood to start to rediscover it and also to meet these dancers, the artists that make up the National Ballet of Canada. I'm inheriting such a legacy and I'm so excited to get to know every part of the organization and to truly understand how I'm going to fit into that it fills me with such excitement.